recording in progress. Christ is risen. Yes. Just a couple announcements. Um, I hope many of you are going to join us for Bible study. We're not starting, we had planned to start this week, but I have a continuing education opportunity. Um, and I'm really excited because one of my professors from Chicago is going to be at Gettysburg for it. So I'm going to be there on Tuesday and Wednesday uh, this week. So um, so we're moving, starting our start date back to the third. So don't come this this Wednesday, come the third. And we're going to be studying Exodus. So if you want, want to look ahead and read through Exodus, you're welcome to do that. And I also wanted to remind you uh, that it's not too far off before we have our first food trucks. We hope that we have a good turnout. Depending on our turnout for May. Trucks. Uh, aren't happy coming. Um, I think we're actually here. Yeah. Free trucks are not happy um, coming for a few people. So invite some friends uh, for May 4th. Uh, tell them they can celebrate the 4th of May for free trucks. And um, thank you for all your thoughts and prayers for my mother and my family. Uh, my mom is uh, currently at rehab in Greensburg, um, where she'll be for uh, how many weeks? Okay. I'm not sure if I'm careful, but she's in the Greensburg area. My dad's able to go over and see her every day, so we're happy to have her there. And I appreciate putting your thoughts and prayers. Are there other announcements this morning? I know you're listening. Go ahead. Good morning, everyone. Today, so I won't say today we have a special day, but we do. My students are performing at a recital this afternoon at Fellowship Hall. If y'all like to come, it's open to any of you who want to come in. We start at 2 o'clock this afternoon. It lasts about an hour, an hour and 10 minutes. Sorry for those on Zoom. I think we're heavy up now. 
I invite you to stand for our confession and forgiveness. Let us pray. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Almighty God, to whom all hearts are open, all desires known, and from whom no secrets are hid, cleanse the thoughts of our hearts by the inspiration of your Holy Spirit, that we may perfectly love you and worthily magnify your holy name through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. Let us confess our sin in the presence of God and the one another. Gracious God, have mercy on us. We confess that we have turned from you and given ourselves into the power of sin. We are truly sorry and humbly repent. In your compassion, freely cause our sin. We have things we have done, things we have well to do. Let us stand to you and have the Lord's time to you, so that we may live and serve you with the best of all. In the mercy of Almighty God, Jesus Christ was given to die for us, and for his sake, God forgives us all our sins. As a called and ordained minister of the Church of Christ, and by his authority, I therefore declare to you the entire forgiveness of all your sins. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen.
Christ, the love of God, and the communion of the Holy Spirit be with you all. And also with you.
prayer. Bless our Lord, your servant Tina, as she reads to us the Holy Word. May our hearts burn within us as you open to us the scriptures through Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. A reading from Acts. Peter, standing with the eleven, raised his voice and addressed the crowd. Therefore, let the entire house of Israel know with certainty that God has made him both Lord and Messiah, this Jesus whom you crucified. Now when they heard this, they were cut to the heart and said to Peter and to the other apostles, Brothers, what should we do? Peter said to them, Repent and be baptized, every one of you, in the name of Jesus Christ, so that your sins may be forgiven, and you will receive the gift of the Holy Spirit. For the promise is for you, for your children, and for all who are far away, everyone whom the Lord our God calls to him. And he testified with many other arguments and exhorted them, saying, Save yourselves from this corrupt generation. So those who welcomed his message were baptized, and that day about 3,000 persons were added. Word of God, word of life. Thanks be to God. about seven miles from Jerusalem, and talking with each other about all the things that had happened. While they were talking and discussing, Jesus himself came near and went with them. 
but their eyes were kept from recognizing him. And he said to them, What were you discussing with each other while you walk along? They stood still, looking sad. Then one of them said, whose name was Cleopas, answered him, Are you the only stranger in Jerusalem who does not know the things that have taken place there in these days? He asked them, What things? They replied, The things about Jesus of Nazareth, who was a prophet, mighty in deed, and word before God and all the people, and how our chief priests and leaders handed them over to be condemned to death and crucified him. But we had hoped that he was the one to redeem Israel. Yes, and besides all this, it is now the third day since these things took place. Moreover, some women of our group astounded us. They were at the tomb early this morning, and when they did not find the body there, they came back and told us that we had indeed seen a, they had indeed seen a vision of angels who said that he was alive. Some of those who were here with us went to the tomb and found it just as the women had said, but they did not see him. When he said to them, Oh, how foolish you are, and how slow of heart to believe all that the prophets have declared. Was it not necessary that the Messiah should suffer these things and then enter into his glory? Then beginning with Moses and all the prophets, he interpreted to them the things about himself and all the scriptures. As they came near the village to which they were going, he walked ahead of them as if he were going on. But they urged him strongly, saying, Stay with us, because it is almost evening, and the day is now nearly over. So he went in to stay with them. When he was at the table with them, he took bread, blessed and broke it, and gave it to them. Then their eyes were opened, and they recognized him, and he vanished from their sight. They said to each other, Were not our hearts burning within us? While he was talking with us on the road, while he was opening the scriptures to us? That same hour, they got up and returned to Jerusalem, and they found the eleven and their companions gathered together. They were saying, The Lord is risen indeed, and he has appeared to Simon. They told them what had happened on the road and how he had, made known, had been made known to them in the breaking of the bread. The Gospel of our Lord. Praise to you, I invite the children forward for a message. Okay, I have some optical illusions to look at. Okay, so for anybody on Zoom, they can see it, the congregation can see. You've seen this one before, haven't you? Mm -mm. No, have you we, haven't, we haven't seen this one before, I figured it out. Okay, so what's that say? L, no, that looks like a backwards L. J, E, S, U, S. What's that? Jesus. Okay, ah. but you have to read in the what, don't you? Mm -hmm. Now, after you see it, though, it's hard to unsee it. You can, like every time you look at this, you kind of automatically go to the white after you've noticed it. But normally, we don't read the white part, do we? So that's why it's the illusion. But you figure it out. Yeah, if you put a border around it, it's easier to see. That's why I have it in front of the border. <laughs> now, I have another one for you, though. Both of you, hold these up. Stare at those four dots and count really slow to 30 and then close your eyes and see if you see a picture. But stare at the dots for, and count to 30. Slowly. Slowly. Slowly to 30. <laughs> Just stare at the dots. Okay, go ahead, close your eyes. Do you see anything? Uh, a chicken, I think. Oh, okay. What's the one for you? Do you see anything, a Caroline? Chicken cross with a butterfly? Oh, Caroline's still counting. <coughs> it doesn't work for everybody, but it did work for me when I tried it. I've done it before, though, too, with the same image. Well, that's going to be an upside down image if you see it. Okay, go. You can't see anything? It's really hard. Okay. Well, what did you 
you see? I don't see anything. Okay. I see a chicken cross with a butterfly. Okay, well. So if you stare at this and, and it works for you, you see an image of a face. Whose face do you think you might see? I don't Just a guess, you know, based on where we're at and what we're talking about. He's on. Yeah, you see, you see kind of a traditional image of, of how we usually portray Jesus no. with his long hair and his beard. It really does work for me. It doesn't work no. for me. No. She can't see it. No. Okay. You can see this one now. You can see the That's word. That's easy. Well, what happened to those disciples as they walked with Jesus on the road to Emmaus? They didn't know what they were apparently. They did yeah, he must have looked like this, apparently. <laughs> they couldn't tell him, right? They couldn't recognize him at all. How did they finally recognize who Jesus was? He just snapped the bread. He, he he blessed the bread and broke it for them to eat, right? And then what did they remember? What do you remember? Oh, what Jesus said. Two more than well, no, they didn't know what they, Jesus they said. About the tomb. What Jesus said. Why did he say that? <laughs> what what would he what they been remembering? What when did we break the bread? Bless it and break it. Before, before and after Jesus died. <laughs> but so, yeah, the Passover meal when he said, This is my body, right? So they recognized it in the breaking of the bread. And that's where we too recognize Jesus. We recognize, hopefully we see Christ in our midst, not just on Sunday morning, but when we do share communion, we know and trust that Christ is with us and hopefully we recognize Christ is with us. You two can try this later. You can take back to your seat and try it again. Yes, it is noisy Sunday time, but you can try that later if you want to too. But it is also noisy Sunday. And Nobody. Here. Hey. You've got some noise out there. Go ahead. Hey, hey. I'll do that side and then you can do this. Do we have any, any um, young at heart volunteers to help since we've only got two to try to collect? No. <laughs> All right. You're young at heart. You can go collect some. If you want to go to the back and start up and make me check it out. Okay. Phyllis is helping you guys dig out over there. Oh, okay. He has something to tell. Okay. Tell us this helping you too, because you know. Katie, you haven't got that side. Just go back a little bit. All right. You might have you might have all forgotten everybody now. Pretty close, pretty close. Okay. You gotta put those lids back on. Let's see what we got. I think Phyllis is gonna be the noisiest. It's not that noisy. because it seems too good to be true. And so as much as we enjoy coming in on Easter Sunday and shouting, Christ is risen, 
Yeah, he is risen. He's risen indeed, right away. We love it, right? Christ is risen. He is risen indeed. We love it, right? But that's not exactly how the first Easter went, is it? I mean, after all, first of all, not everybody knew that Christ was alive. And even when they did hear, there was a lot of fear and a lot of confusion. And those first disciples weren't quite sure what this good news meant. And so, last week we hear about them being locked in the upper room. And that's an image that we have of the disciples on that first night after Jesus is alive again. They're afraid that they might too be arrested. They're not sure about this story that they've heard uh, from the women. They don't really quite believe it. All they know is that if they stay locked up, maybe they won't be arrested. Maybe they, too, won't face crucifixion. But those apostles, you know, they're really close to Jesus, have already heard this news. They've already heard that Jesus is alive. But we don't really know what's going on in their minds. And I don't know if they would have known at the time. They certainly couldn't quite explain it. But then in Luke's Gospel, we don't just have those 12 apostles, well, 11 at this point. We don't just have um, the 11 gathered. And we have those ones that are gathered in the upper room. But we've got a whole bunch of disciples. Um, Luke calls the disciples anybody who's a follower of Jesus. Any of those people who were in the crowd, any of those people who kept following Jesus around, trying to listen to as many of his teachings as they could, trying to understand them, trying to live by them, trying to grow in their faith the way Jesus was teaching them. And we don't know much of their experiences. I mean, what we do know is that some of them went to the tomb early, some of the women. And they're the ones who come back and say, They've seen these angels. They've heard that Jesus is alive. They trust that Jesus is alive. And in some of the Gospels, we even hear that they've witnessed that they've seen Jesus. At least Mary Magdalene got to see Jesus. But when they tell those disciples, Luke makes it clear that the disciples' reaction is, it's an idle tale. They don't really believe the women. They think maybe they're overly dramatic, or maybe they've been seeing things or experiencing something. Maybe they're a little crazy. They don't really know what to make of these women. And so, as people are trying to get back to their normal lives, we have this glimpse of what somebody trying to get back to their normal life is like on the road to Emmaus. We have these two disciples. Uh, you know, some people think it's Cleopas and his wife. And that's a possibility. It might be Cleopas and uh, another male disciple. It's hard to say who it is that's walking along with Cleopas, but it's two people who aren't part of the inner circle. They're not going to hide out in the upper room, although they're going to end up making it to the upper room as we hear at the end. But they're not hiding out in the upper room with Jesus, or with uh, the other disciples. Finally, Jesus shows up too. But they're, they're not there. They're part of that outer circle. They're part of the ones for whom Jesus was really important, but they weren't there from the beginning. They weren't the ones that were called and sent out uh, to teach about Jesus, to prepare the way for Jesus. But they're ones that were passionate about Jesus' message. They're ones that were trying to understand who Jesus was, and they're ones that were hopeful that this was the Messiah. And then when they hear that not only that he's died, but this weird tale about women coming back and saying he's really alive, they don't know what to make of it. And so they start on their way home. They start walking to Emmaus. And it's in the process of walking to Emmaus that they're trying to make sense of things. And after any traumatic experience, one of the ways that we still make sense of things is to try to talk it out. Try to put it into words. Try to have a way to grasp it and experience it again in a way that makes sense. And so as they're trying to do that, they find a stranger that apparently doesn't know anything that's happened in the last couple of days. And I don't know if you've ever had this experience or not, 
But occasionally, it is easier when you've gone through something dramatic and something that um, is just life-changing for you and in the midst of grief, sometimes it's easier to open up to a stranger than it is to open up to your own family or friends. Because the emotion is just too much sometimes. Or you don't want to dredge it up again to another person who's experiencing the same thing. But a stranger who seems to be a good listener is sometimes a great option. And that's what they do. They start telling the stranger about everything that's happened. And suddenly, the stranger starts teaching them. Starts teaching them about who Jesus was. And, okay, when you read it this way, it starts to sound like, if you just read through the Old Testament, it would have been easy to understand that Jesus had to suffer and then rise again. Now, I don't know how many of you have read through all the Old Testament, but I know a few of you have read through a lot of it, and some of you have probably read through all of it at some point in your lives. And I've got to be honest, I've read through it, and it's not necessarily easy to jump to, oh, the Messiah definitely had to suffer and die. I mean, it's not written in black and white. It's not like, oh, here, every time we talk about the Messiah, it also talks about the suffering and dying. It's more like the optical illusions that I shared with uh, the kids. It's more like it's in there, and it certainly is. It certainly is part of our tradition. It certainly is something that makes sense, but only after somebody helps point it out and you can see it. And then it's hard to unsee it. It's like uh, the Jesus word. You know, when you look at it, and if you've ever seen, people have done that in um, plastic canvas. And if you've ever, ever seen it in plastic canvas, it's really nice. You, know, you can sit it out, and people have it sitting out different places. And if you don't know what it is, you look at it, and it just looks like weird blocks and kind of an odd geometric design. But then as soon as you see it, the next time you see it, you can't unsee the word Jesus in it. Because as soon as you see it, your eye goes right to it. And that's what happens for us when we read scripture. It's been pointed out to you so many times, and especially in passages that we read from Isaiah and in some of the Psalms that we read, that we see the suffering, we hear about the suffering, we know that that's part of the canon of scripture, and we expect that to be what Jesus went through. But it wasn't that easy, and it isn't that easy to see it. And so it's not that the disciples aren't good uh, scholars of scripture. It's not that they're naive. It's just that it's not something that's so clear that it's easy to see. It's more like the big picture where it's hard to see at first. But then when you see it, it makes sense. And you can see Christ in many different places. But even as Jesus is telling them this, those disciples still can't see who he is. They still look at Jesus and still see a stranger in their midst. It takes him coming into their home. It takes Jesus picking up a loaf of bread, blessing it and breaking it before their eyes are opened before they can clearly see that Jesus is not only, only alive, but he is with them. And this story always reminds me that in a world where there's much pain and hurt, in a world where things are sometimes chaotic or things are going so fast in people's lives that it's all just a blur in, in some days, that it's easy not to see Jesus in our midst. And if two people who follow Jesus, who tried to depend and learn from his teachings, who were hoping that he was the Messiah, if those two people walking right with Jesus didn't recognize him, it's okay when we don't recognize Jesus in our midst. But my prayer is that during this Easter season, you do recognize Jesus in your midst. 
It might take you coming uh, for communion when we commune next. It might make you, it might take you coming to the table and experiencing once again the presence of Christ as we break bread and drink wine as we partake of Jesus' body and blood once again. Or it may be that when you're walking in your daily life, you see somebody's compassion and somebody's love and grace, and you can see clearly see Christ. I don't know what it will be, but I hope and pray that the Holy Spirit opens your eyes this Easter season and that you know Christ is right in your midst. And when you do see Christ, I hope you can help my, make Christ known for somebody else who needs to see that Christ is truly alive. Christ is risen. He is risen indeed. Hallelujah.
joy of the resurrection, let us pray for the church, the world, and all in need. United in the hope and joy of the resurrection, let us pray for the church, the world, and all in need. Ever present God, you made yourself known in the breaking of bread and the bonds of community. Reveal yourselves to us in the faces of all we meet. Strengthened by your body and blood, let us boldly live out in the good news. Hear us, O God. Your mercy is great. As we know you in breaking the bread, we know in the grace of the fields and the flowing waters. Care for the earth, your lovingly creator. Strengthen those who safeguard the threatens, land and water. Hear us, O God. Your mercy is great. You are the authority to whom we dedicate our lives. <coughs> Help us the needs of those most vulnerable and at the forefront of our community. Move us to care for any who is disregarded or oppressed. Hear us, O oh God. Your mercy is great. Mother in God, you feed and comfort those who hunger. Open the hearts of those who hoard resources and lead them to share your abundance. We pray for anyone hungry for your comfort and presence this day, especially Reverend Abby, Abby, Philip Albert, Helen Martin, Doris Berger, David Lloyd, Jerry Grant, Amy Brown, Chris Brown, Marlon Brown, Nancy Brown, Sandy Brown, Tracy Pulsaka, Kathy Cable, Chuck and Family, Bennett Curl, Bob Curl, Angela DeLuca, Diane, Susan Dimmer, Craig Donahue, James Stop, Nicole Dudak, Ernie Heiser, Carol Pencil, Ed Pencil, Diane Bowles, George Trump, Stevie Gardner, Ken Guest, Linda Griffith, Rosie Garino, James Harris, Ryan Hartman, Mike Cass, Jen Hiloki, Greg Hoover, Doug Hopkins, Rick Hopkins, Terry Hopkins, Doria Hummer, Karen Cap, Aaron Keene, Chris Jonas, Jim Lake, Barb Lehman, Pearl Lamer, Bartok Lepchuk, Jim Lloyd, Keith Lloyd, Sonia Lucas, Margaret River Family, Marta, Nina McWayne, Michael McGarry, Charlotte Miller, Joe Dorothy, Ron Nagel, Steve Nelson, Alice Park, Patty Patton, Audrey Peters, Rick Peters, Sandy Quinlan, William Reynolds, Mike Rodriguez, Sharon Rodriguez, Carol Roman, Evan Rush, Dolores Ruth, Sadie, Brian Sanders, Darlene Sanders, Brett Sanders, Ed Sassaman, Laura Shank, Nicole Shields, Edie Shawley, John Schumberger, Brian Sane, Brian Steen, Al Scrimiglio, Eddie Scrimiglio, Stephanie Sackville, Lydia Seal, Dustin Steele, Amanda Stoltz, Carol Stoltz, Jennifer Summers, Lisa Sotarina, Bill Taylor, Donald Thomas, Megan Thomas, Cheryl Ward, Michael Ward, Eric O'Beary, Courtney Well, Brian Williams, Mary Yanchko, Gary Ziegler. And those we may be before you now aloud or in our hearts. Bruce Lawley. Bruce Lawley. Ken Sure. Ken Sure. Hear us, O oh God. Your mercy is great. You pour your love on those who are oppressed. Support and comfort anyone who is marginalized by gender and sexuality and those whose stories block beliefs. Form this community to listen faithfully and speak honestly in your ministry together. Hear us, O oh God. Your mercy is great. Rejoicing in the victory of Christ's resurrection, we lift our prayers and praise you, Almighty and Eternal God, through Jesus Christ, our risen Lord. Amen.
God of justice and love, we give thanks to you that you are moving our way through life with the words of your Son. Give us the light we need. Awaken us to the needs of others. And at the end of all the, all the world, and at the end, bring all the world to your feast. Through Jesus Christ, our Savior and Lord, to whom with you and the Holy Spirit be honor and glory forever. Amen. And as Christ has taught us, we boldly pray together. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory, forever and ever. Amen. The God of all who raised Jesus from the dead, bless you by the power of the Holy Spirit to live in the new creation. Amen. Thanks be to God.